to turn on his, uh, his uh, video in a, in a moment here. Uh, and of course, our special guest uh, this is a long Holy time. Cow. In, in this I had a feeling. <laughs> How are you? Very well. What a, so, what a such an honor. Oh, no, wow. What a, what a pleasure. Uh, just, uh, you know, part of the frustration is uh, uh, when I saw my schedule, I was visiting Whistler today. I got uh, all excited uh, despite the impracticality of it. Uh, unfortunately, it's just a virtual visit, but uh, glad to check in with one of my favorite places in the country. Well, well, this is such an honor. If I would have known you were going to be here, I would have worn my, my wig. <laughs> well, I'm wearing mine. It's enough for the both of us. Excellent. Wow, well, such, such an honor. I'd like to introduce um, uh, Pepe Barajas and, and Lou Hudak, who are um, uh, the, the, uh, the owners and director of the Infinity Enterprises Group, which, uh, which, is, uh, which includes a number of uh, restaurants in, uh, throughout the Lower Mainland, and, but especially in Whistler, where, uh, where Pepe runs a, a couple businesses and um, is a, uh, a, a superstar in the food and, and beverage industry. And, uh, and, and a leader as part of the uh, Restaurant Association as well. So I wanted to, to introduce uh, them to you and uh, really appreciate you, you making the trip virtually and uh, coming back to your old uh, stomping grounds in Whistler. Well, listen, it's, uh, it, it is so important that we, uh, that we stay connected. And one of the most frustrating things for me uh, through this pandemic has not been able to, to be out there to, to meet with people and to and to hear firsthand some of the challenges and concerns you're going through. And I know, uh, you know our MPs like Patrick have done an amazing job in passing along concerns and, and suggestions. And I know uh, you, uh, Pepe, through business uh, organizations and things have been uh, active on making recommendations. But uh, this is a really important part for me of, of hearing how things are going and uh, understanding how, uh, how we can uh, do better to, to support people through this tough time. So I'd uh, just love to hear from you two on, uh, on how, uh, uh, how you're seeing things, how, uh, how you've been experiencing this, uh, this pandemic and mostly uh, what, uh, what we can continue to do to help. Absolutely. Well, uh, thanks so very much for, for listening to what we have to, to say and for considering our, our feedback. We've been uh, all very proud about your fearless leadership uh, just before you joined, Lou and I were mentioning that we are so grateful to be in Canada. I'm originally from Mexico City. I immigrated 12 years ago, and I have been able to, to build seven businesses. We are growing to nine businesses this, this year. We are growing from 150 employees to 200. And uh, I can tell you that uh, this kind of thing, I would have not been able to do it in, in, in Mexico. So Canada has offered me great opportunities and that sent you for, for your leadership and Patrick's leadership. So we are uh, tremendously grateful for everything you do for, for the country. We really appreciate it. And I am speaking on, be on behalf of the entire Worcester community. We all are rooting for you guys. Excellent. Should I start then with a general overview, Patrick, or? Yeah, if, if you don't mind, some of the things we talked about would be very, very, um, yeah, I think be very beneficial for uh, the Prime Minister to hear directly from you. Perfect, yeah, so winter, we, winter is a little bit different than summer. In summer, we rely more on rubber traffic, where a lot of people come from the lower mainland. And in winter, 80% of our guests are international, so it's a, a dollars that come from, from other places, with the borders being closed and only 12 to 14% of the entire Canadian population being skiers, then uh, our market is ranked uh, significantly. Uh, it, it has been very volatile where we don't know what to expect. So planning has been a little tougher. We have planned for a higher business level so that we have the ability to scale back down if that's necessary. But if the traffic is there, then at least we are able to take advantage of the, of the traffic uh, while doing it safely. Of course, uh, being safe remains at the top of our priority because we understand that if we are not safe, then this is gonna take much, much longer. So that's, a, that's how it's working. So uh, right now, basically we are planning a month ahead of, ahead of, a, of time and even two weeks ahead of time. So for example, yesterday, we plan for X business levels and uh, very quickly we realized that we needed to, to scale that, uh, that back down. 
So we started calling a, a few a few people. We think that's going to be the case throughout January, February, and and March at least until more people are not uh, vaccinated. Uh, I think the the advantage of winter is that uh, it is this is not calling us by surprise. Now we are well prepared, and it's just uh, whether companies have the ability to scale up and down quickly. I guess the companies that they are able to do that were, are the ones that will be in a much better position when, when the recovery phase starts. Uh, we luckily in Whistler, I believe we have positioned ourselves correctly uh, in a way that that's kind of our business model. We get to enjoy uh, high business levels in summer, high business levels in winter, and then we have to, to scale back down in, in spring and, and uh, fall. So I think Whistler companies are a little better prepared for that. Also, the, the workforce here knows that that's how Whistler works. So they are not surprised if all of a sudden we need to, to cut back uh, on, on hours and whatnot. Lou, would you like to make some additional remarks in here? Um, yeah, you know, I would agree with what you said. And um, it, it's just a very different year, very, very different year. And uh, um, how can I? add more to what you've said. Um, the, the bottom line is like with the help that we're getting from the government, I don't think, I don't think Whistler would be on the map at this point, right? And then maybe to take the conversation further, what's really gonna be important is to, is to keep the support going. Um, and that's sort of the common thing we're, we're getting so that um, the bridge is long enough. That's sort of the, um, the wording that business leaders are using so that let's say um, we, we, the federal government has, has invested a tremendous amount of support and money to keep the businesses going. And if that help was to end prematurely, then all that investment would have been lost. So I think that's gonna be the key thing to discuss um, as to what the federal government could do for us um, over the next few months or a couple of years. Yeah, that's that's a really good point, Lou. I mean, you know, we we made the decision early on uh, to say, okay, this pandemic is going to hit hard and it's going to hit our economy really hard. Who do we want uh, bearing the brunt of it? Uh, do we want businesses to have to shut down? People have to take out extra mortgages? People to go into debt? Um, mm -hmm. No, not just because that would be a bad idea, but it would also, as you start reopening, you'd be worried about paying back your debt. Uh, and it would slow down everything. So we made the decision uh, that we were going to support people. Uh, but you, know, you can't just support them for a few months and say, okay, it's done. We, we're going to be there as long as it takes, as much as it takes. Now, uh, the right. challenge is, of course, getting it right, uh, because we're, you know, we're talking about you know, money that Canadians are going to be accountable to uh, over the coming decades uh, in terms of our debt. Now, we're lucky that yeah, as a federal government, we borrow it next to zero percent, which means mm -hmm. uh, we're able to uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 absorb uh, more debt uh, in a rapid fashion than uh, than businesses or individuals can. Uh, but we do have to figure out the way we can do it responsibly. Now, there's no question, as Pepe, as you've said, uh, that vaccines are going to make a big difference. Uh, once people start getting vaccinated, there's going to be travel again. But it's going to be uneven. Um, you know, Canadians will start traveling again, possibly quicker than Americans. I mean, uh, the United States is being hit a lot harder than, uh, than this. And I could see a summer where, uh, you know, we're encouraging Canadians to travel across the country a little more uh, and not travel around the world because it's still, uh, still bad out there, much worse than in Canada. Uh, and we're going to have to try and make up for the money that would be coming in from elsewhere around the world, which we know Canadian tourists will never do. Well, you know, Canadians will never spend as much as, you know, the Chinese have, the Japanese have, the, uh, the Americans will. But we're going to be able to, to, to start figuring out how to ramp up as best as we can. Uh, there's no question that this is, you know, this is going to be a, a while. Even as things start getting back to normal, we'll have echoes of this for the coming years. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the important thing is to figure out how we can make it work. And that, and the sort of the innovative uh, approaches that uh, business groups like yours have taken, uh, the, the, the connection with communities, uh, you know, the figuring out how to 
how to support staff, how to be part of the whole thing. Um, I feel very optimistic. We're all going to be able to make it through this um, with uh, in the best possible way. It's not going to be easy, but if we can make sure that everyone shares the burden a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to come through this a lot, a, a lot stronger, a lot better than than uh, uh, than many other places. So uh, that's sort of my perspective on it. And uh, hearing from you, I mean, uh, I know in the fall you were talking about the need to. Uh, give greater predictability and extend extend the business uh, supports. Uh, we've done that until the summer. Uh, other supports we know are going on to the fall. And as we get closer, if we see that, you know, despite vaccinations, it looks like we're still going to need some pretty heavy duty supports, we'll bring those in. Uh, because there is no point having made all the sacrifices, whether it's mm -hmm. personal or, 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 you know, business investments that we've made to get us to this point, to, to you know, give up for the last few months and say, oh, never mind, we'll let it all collapse. Yeah. Because being there to support people is not just about the, the, the right thing to do, but of course it is. That's what we do as Canadians. We support each other. It also ensures that when things can reopen fully, you won't be busy rebuilding from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, you will be able to flip a switch and get things on and call people up and have them back. And within uh, mm -hmm. a short period of time, you'll know, get back up to high scale capacity. Now, Whistler is a little more resilient uh, because yeah. as you say, you go up and down uh, through the seasons. Uh, but that kind of thinking is what we're gonna try and uh, bring in across the country as well. I, I would like to, to add uh, to that comment that the wage subsidy has been probably the best support we have uh, uh, got so far. And the reason being is not only because of the cash flow that uh, is getting into the businesses, but it has allowed us to innovate. So before the wage subsidy was in place, we just had to lay it off everybody. So everybody was at home, not being productive, just getting into bad habits. As soon as the wage subsidy came uh, in place, we were able to bring back everyone we were able to retain our talent and we were able to pivot to more innovative uh, processes. I can share the story uh, of a Whistler company that was a shuttle company. It's called Whistler Connection doing uh, shuttles from uh, Whistler to, to the airport. As soon as the wage subsidy came into place, they switched to delivery groceries uh -huh. and to a car wash. And you won't believe it, but they were financially uh, viable. So they actually were able to be profitable with, with this. We were also able to, to innovate. We brought back uh, people on higher salaries, like corporate chef, the director of operations. And because business were uh, lower, we were able to, to plan better uh, ahead of time. We were able to strengthen our policies, procedures, our, program, our protocols. So we actually became a lot more efficient than what we were uh, before. So there are tremendous benefits to that we also were able to train people. So instead of being stagnant and not doing anything with that time, we were able to increase the, the skills of our people. And just exactly as you said, when, they, when the economy starts uh, bouncing back, then we were ready. We're not just uh, now like starting to bring people back and whatnot, we, we were ready. And we were actually stronger than we were before. So uh, I cannot uh, stress enough how grateful all companies are for that kind of, a, of, of support because being able to be innovative is, is what uh, keeps us in the game. But I mean, at the, at the core of that is something really important that I, I take seriously. If you are going to hire people and bring in more policies, if you're going to retrain staff so that they can do more, if you're going to make things more efficient, that all relies on you having confidence that we're going to get through this, mm -hmm. that there's going to be another side, that, that, that we'll get it. And that was where, as a government, giving people the confidence to say, okay, this is going to be a hit, but we're going to make it through. So figure out how to use this time. I was speaking uh, earlier today to a, a restaurant owner in Prince Edward Island who said, well, during the two months we had to shut down completely, I repainted the place. I did renovations. We took mm -hmm. time to do things that Normally, you don't have time to yeah. do. So, so right. that kind of thinking is part of what is going to allow us to come back to where we were before, but actually also say, okay, 
we're able to innovate and do things differently. I mean, a lot of people uh, who, who learned how to do things online and with delivery and different business models are going to continue that uh, mm -hmm. into the future, even after the pandemic. So that's that, that's that's what I'm, I'm so excited about hearing from. from, from yeah, we were able to come up with a, actually new menus, new services. Uh, we already were in the takeout model, but right now we're going to implement these lockers where people are, will be able to, to order online and everything is contactless. So they will receive a QR code. We load the locker from, from behind. It's a heated locker. Uh -huh. They come, scan the QR code, the, the door opens, and then they will be able to, to grab the meal from there. So, uh, and all that was thank you to the, to the wage subsidy because one, the, one way to look at it is either the money is being provided through the wage subsidy or it's being provided through EI or the previous uh, serve. So uh, we think it's a much better use of the resources if we can keep people active in the economy while they learn new skills. Yeah, no, and that's and that was exactly one of the thinkings around the wage subsidy. I said, look, we could we could just do it straight for the serve, but if we send them the money through your payroll system, mm -hmm. uh, it keeps the connection with mm -hmm. your 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 business, so they still feel they have a job to come back to. Um, but more yes. than that, it keeps the infrastructure and the flow going through your business, and you're the one who knows best, you know, who your employees are and what yeah how to reach out. So. That as a model really ended up working and, and I'm really glad to hear it worked for you. Yeah, and then going back to the analogy of the, of the bridge, right now, I don't know in which stage we are of the bridge because again, everything is still a little uncertain until we don't get more clarity with the, with the vaccines. But what I was sharing with, the, with Patrick is that probably to make a better use of the resources, we could look at it from a profitability per industry standard for example, the food and beverage uh, industry doesn't get to enjoy the profit that the oil industry gets to enjoy, for example, just for, for, for as, as an example. So maybe looking at, at a more targeted support and saying, like, okay, which sectors may need that additional help to keep them alive while other sectors may need a little bit uh, less, uh, less help. That, that could be another way of, of looking at it. Yeah, no, and that's, and that's something we're, we're looking at now. I mean, obviously, in the very beginning, we had to set things up to just get it out. And, and now yeah. we're seeing stories of companies that, that took the money and, and, and gave bonuses. And I mean, we're, we're yeah. going to try and figure that out after the mm -hmm. fact. But now mm -hmm. as we get moving, we're able to look a little more carefully at the areas that need the support, the areas that shouldn't be getting the support, mm -hmm. the areas where real innovation and leapfrogging forward is going to be possible other areas we just have to you know hang on and, and support yeah. you know, so all those reflections we have a little more space and time and understanding to do it now because we've we've got through the emergency parts and we're we're, we're continuing now in in something that we've gotten used to now what I, another important comment here to be made would be me being passionate about business and being an entrepreneur since I was 22 years old, that's when I first started my, my first company. What it would, I would hate to see is that only the large corporations are the ones that get to survive while we kill the dreams of all these smaller entrepreneurs. And now as more, if large corporations take over the entire market, then it's a lot harder for a, for, for a guy that is dreaming and, and, and wants to make, to, to make his own dream come true to start because now it's competing with all these massive uh, companies. Uh, we also lose a little bit of uh, individuality when it comes to the personality because having uh, lots of small entrepreneurs, it just adds to that magic when you visit a place and, and it's full of, of uniqueness. It, each place is unique and that's because each person has their own individual dream as opposed to, to one massive dream from, from a, a massive corporation. I think balance is important. We need those massive corporations because they are the ones that sometimes get to, to do bigger innovations. But we also need all those smaller entrepreneurs. And most importantly, keeping that dream alive where people can see that if they have a dream, they can go for it because it's, it's possible. And they could keep adding to the economy and to the uniqueness of Canada. Absolutely. Well, listen, that is wonderful to hear. Before I know, uh, I know I'm going to have to run, and you guys have to as well. But uh, 
uh, it wouldn't be a, a visit to Whistler without finding out what are the conditions like? How is the season? Do I want to know? Oh, boy. Uh, you don't want to know because it's great. <laughs> we got a, on Saturday and Sunday, we got almost a meter of snow. <gasps> Yesterday was still snowing. Probably in the last five days, we have received over two meters. And, there, and there's nobody on the mountain. There's just the local. Uh, yeah. So that's how oh. I broke my rib. Because <laughs> I was getting too crazy and then I broke my rib on Sunday. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, yeah. hopefully you'll heal up fast. But uh, listen, it's, uh, it's been so good to talk with you guys. Uh, thank you, Patrick, for, uh, for making this, uh, this happen. Thank you uh, uh, so much, Pepe. Thank you so much, Lou, for, uh, for sharing. I'll, I'll turn it back to you, Patrick, for uh, final comments. Well, I just want to also say thank you so much, uh, Prime Minister, for, for uh, joining our call and, and visiting us uh, virtually here. And of course, we'd love to have you up in Whistler and get you up on the mountain again. And I'll be back one day. It's yeah, killing but me. you have to promise me that you'll come for, for a margarita and some Mexican food at one of my restaurants. <laughs> I look forward to that. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Real, real honor. Thank you, guys. Real honor. Thank Take you. Care.